This is the third lecture on electrodirectional directional stability derivatives. And in this lecture, we are looking at CLR, which is a rolling moment change due to the yawing angular rate. Again, we need to first define this problem before we do the derivation. What happens now is we have this aircraft and this aircraft is yawing at a rate of r. Okay, and what happens is, um, so its wings will now be moving at unequal speeds. The forward going one in here is uh, left wing will generate more lift and the right wing um, will be the backward going one. So it will and generate less lift. And in the meantime, if we move to the uh, fin, so its fin will be moving sideways, and this sideways motion will cause a side force on the fin. Okay, so basically, uh, in order to derive the rolling moment, so uh, according to the analysis here, we will have two contributions. One contribution is from the wing, the other contribution is from the fin. First of all, let's see the wing contribution. How the wing can contribute to the rolling moment. First of all, let's focus at the top view. So it's a simplified view and uh, the red dot is the center of gravity. Okay, so what happens is now we have a positive uh, yawing rate r and in this case the left wing will be forward moving and then the actual velocity will be v minus r times y and similarly the right wing will be backward moving and the vector will be the velocity will be slightly smaller but it still follows the same relation v minus r times y. So you may wonder why it's minus. This is because um, the origin is at the center of gravity. The left wing has negative y and the right wing has positive y. And we assume r is positive. So r times y is negative value. So that's why we for the left wing it's v minus r y. So then it's uh, larger than v. Uh, differently on the right wing, right side wing, and r y is positive, and y times r is positive, and so v minus r y is uh, slightly smaller than v. Okay. So now we know the left wing moves uh, slightly faster, but the right wing moves slightly smaller. Okay. So since we are there is a change in velocity, so the lift also will be changed. Now let's move to the re rear view of this aircraft. And originally, before we are applying the yawing rate, we see the lift forces on the left and the right wings are the same. Okay, but now since we are applying this uh, yawing rate, and the left wing will have slightly larger lift because it's uh, forward moving the velocity will be larger and uh, the same for the right wing because it moves uh, slightly slower then the lift will be smaller so in this case what we can see is a positive rolling moment will be produced so now let's review the problem again so under the positive rate of yaw, we are concerning the forward velocity of the of incremental wing sections. Okay. So for the left wing, at any location y, so the velocity of the left wing is v minus r y, and so it has increased the lift. And for the right wing, although the velocity is still the same v minus r times y but this time it's slightly smaller so we have reduced the lift and so the left wing has increased lift while the right wing has reduced lift in total there will be a positive rolling moment l produced
Now we understand how the rolling moment is produced. In order to derive the rolling moment, and again we need to use the incremental method, so we are investigating an infinite small section on the right wing, it's a random location. Okay, and again, although we are showing the uh, rectangular wing, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's a random shape. Okay, so the chord is a function of y, so it changes along the uh, span. Okay, we know that section, highlighted blue section, is moving at a velocity of v minus ry, and then the lift can be calculated as cl times half rho times that velocity square times cy dy. And let's do a bit analysis. So the CL is a lift coefficient of that wing section. And the CY times DY is the area of that in, in incremental section. Okay, so now we know the lift acting on that uh, small section. So we need to uh, simplify this relation. So we are working on the V minus RY square. So we expand it. And now what we are using is a small uh, disturbance of assumption because we are assuming that R, yawing rate, is very small. So Ry is a, is a change velocity. It's much smaller than uh, the true airspeed V. So in that case, the last turn on the right-hand side can be eliminated. So that square eventually becomes V squared minus 2Ry times V. Okay, so it's simplified. Let's plug it in back. So for the left wing, we can have dl, so that's uh, the incremental uh, rolling moment produced by that wing section. So it's uh, lift at that section times minus y. Why minus y? Because on the left wing, y is negative. So the moment arm should be positive so that's why we add a negative sign and for the right wing we have dl equals minus d lift times y so this time the minus sign is on the before the lift why is that because the lift uh, the moment generate the rolling moment gener generated by the lift on the right wing is actually negative that's why we are adding a negative sign so eventually and um, the dl on the left wing and the right wing are actually the same value or same expression we've derived the dl which is the uh, rolling moment contributed by the incremental section now what we need to do is just to do the integration and then we can have the total wing contribution to the rolling moment okay so this is uh, uh, integration of dl and it's integrated from half minus half b to half b okay so i would like you to uh, repeat this procedure and eventually on the right hand side we have two parts in the integration now we need to work out that integration so i pick it out specifically and eventually it becomes uh, as the part showing here okay and it's a bit mathematical and uh, you're encouraged to to do this okay so now we can have the rolling moment and why we can't take c out because c we know it's uh, it's a general chord. It's actually a function of y. That that's why it stays inside the uh, integration. Okay. So we walk further, and that's this L R, which is a derivative, partial derivative of L, partial L, partial R. So that's why the R uh, is eliminated. Okay, then we find the denominator, which is half rho v s b square, to calculate the um, CLR, which is the, uh, what we want. That's a, a yawing rate change give rise to the um, rolling moment. Okay, so, and it's not done yet. 
there is an exceptional case if we are looking at the rectangular wing, which means C is a constant. Now we notify the C, C bar as a mean chord. Okay, and then we have the expression of L, and then we have the LR where the, um, the yarn rate can be eliminated. And then finally, we have the CLR. In this case, for the rec rectangular wing, the CLR uh, contributed by the wing is much more concise. It's just one sixth of CL. So this looks quite neat. That's why um, we specifically uh, look at the rectangular wing. We've derived the wind contribution to the rolling moment on a small change in yaw, yaw rate. Okay, so now we are looking at the fin contribution to the rolling moment L. Um, so we, we are quite familiar with this sketch, this aircraft. And since we are looking at the fin, that's why I'm putting the vector, velocity vector at the fin. Okay, so what happens now is because uh, we are applying a small yawing rate R, and that means the fin moves towards the left hand side, so there is a small velocity V, small V, and then in total, the total velocity of the fin will pointing towards the uh, top left, so that's a total velocity, and the total velocity forms an angle beta between uh, with the original true airspeed V. Okay, so in this case, there will be a side force produced um, on the fin and it's pointing towards the right hand side because now under the effect of uh, small v, the fin actually flies at an angle of attack beta. That's why we have this induced side force. And then further on, this side force will produce will contribute to the rolling moment L. Let's see how the rolling uh, moment L can be derived. But before, uh, before we can answer that derivation, we first need to calculate YF. How do we calculate, get the YF? Okay, so that's a task for now. And since the YF is uh, is kind of side force, a side force to uh, side lift force, and now we need to look at the thing. Okay, so first of all, the small velocity v equals r times lf. The lf is the distance between the center of gravity and the aerodynamic center of the thing, and that's uh, lf. Okay, and then in that triangle, and we know tangent of beta equals r times lf, that's small v, divided by uh, true airspeed, big V. Okay. And similarly, we are applying this small angle assumption, and then beta is roughly r lf divided by v. OK, now we know the beta, and it is effectively the angle of attack for the fin. OK, so naturally, we can calculate the side lift force from the fin yf equals r5 times beta times half rho v squared times sf. sf is the uh, fin area. Okay, so you may wonder what is AF? AF is actually the fin CL lift coefficient curve slope. Okay, so then we can uh, have the dimensional side force YF, which is due to the angle of attack beta. And um, okay, we've uh, derived uh, the expression for YF, and we can see the YF is actually acting on the aerodynamic center of the fin. It's higher than the center of gravity. And, and usually we denote the height, that distance is ZF. And if we use our right hand, we can find there will be a positive rolling moment produced due to that Y, F force. So you can see how the fin can contribute to the rolling moment. Okay, so now let's calculate LF. 
So the L contributed by the fin is YF times ZF. We know YF and then we plug it in, we can have L, then we calculate the derivative LR. So the R yawing rate can be eliminated and finally we uh, divide LR by the denominator. So we have the, uh, the fin contribution to the CLR. Now what we can do is we can combine the wing contribution and the fin contribution to the um, CLR and uh, eventually this is the expression for the rectangular wing. Okay? And the first component is the wing contribution and then the second component is the fin contribution. Actually the wing contribution is very important during high CO lift coefficient conditions, for example, taking off, landing, and when the aircraft is near the store. So this is a derivation for the CLR, rolling moment change due to rate of yaw.